This is just a quick video showing the basics of setting up the Facebook Pixel. Facebook used to require separate conversion pixels and custom audience pixels, but now you only have to install one pixel across your entire site or even multiple sites. And that one pixel can be used to track conversions and create custom audiences for retargeting. To find your pixel code, first go into your ad screen and then from the manage ad screen, go up here to tools and then choose pixels. It's gonna bring you to this page. From here, it, if this is your first time visiting this page, then Facebook's going to give you your pixel code that you install on your site. If you've already used Facebook codes in the past, then you're going to need to go to Actions and click on View Pixel Code. From here, you're going to copy the entire code, copy it, and then you're going to paste this into your site in between the head tags of your site. The easiest way to think of this is when you're looking at your site, look for the end head tag and paste this code right before the end head tag. Now one of the most common types of websites is WordPress, so I'm going to show you several ways you can install the code into WordPress. The first way that you can do it is you can edit your actual theme that you're using. You can get to your theme by clicking on Appearance on the left side of WordPress and then click on Editor. From Editor, look over here on the right in Templates and choose the header. From here, you're going to scroll down and look for the end head tag. There it is. There's the end head tag. So I would paste in the Facebook code right here. Then I would just simply scroll down and update the file, which would add the Facebook pixel to my entire WordPress blog. And so you could do this on each of the blogs that you own. Now, there's several other ways that you can do it. For example, there are plugins out there that allow you to insert headers and footers. Here's one of them, for example. This one's just simply called Insert Headers and Footers. Install this free plugin on your blog, and it makes it very easy to install the Facebook Pixel into your blog. You're just going to insert this inside the header section. There's also some themes that give you the ability to insert code into the header as part of the admin options. For example, I use Optimize Press on some of my websites. And in Optimize Press, you would click on Optimize Press and then Dashboard. And then from the Dashboard, they have Analytics and Tracking. And right here, we have Header Tracking Code. So I would paste the Facebook Pixel Code right here, add it, adding it into my other tracking codes in the header of the site. And so that'll install into the Optimize Press. So that gives you three different ways you can install the Pixel on a WordPress website. You can edit the theme and make sure that you put it inside the header section. You can use a plugin for inserting headers and footers, or you can add it to the admit admin screen of some themes when they give you that option. Now, once you have the code installed, you're gonna go back to Facebook and there's several different things that we can do. If you're doing any type of Facebook advertising, obviously you want to track your results. And so one of the first things that you're going to do is you're going to go over here and create a custom conversion. And so what you'll do is what type of conversion are you tracking? For example, if you're tracking opt-in leads, you're generating leads on your website, then you could go down here and choose lead. What if you want, are you using double opt-in? Let's say that you're using double opt-in. So someone opts in, and we're gonna call that person a lead. We could have the second step after they confirm be complete the registration. You'll notice we also have the ability for view content, search, add the cart, and purchases right here. For this example, let's just use lead. So what am I gonna put as the rule? Well, let's say that my thank you page after somebody opted in, it was mymarketingcoach.com slash thanks. So that would be the page after someone op opts in. I would then change this to URL equals mymarketingcoach.com thanks. This is gonna be a lead. So this is the page that someone would land on after they opt in. We go to the next. And now you'll, I will name the custom conversion. So this would be the name for, what I, for whatever it is that I'm creating. So so if this is my freebie, the seven ways to create profitable emails, even if you're not a writer, then I might put the seven ways to create emails. 
as the name of this conversion. Now I can also define a conversion value, but since this is a lead, I'm not gonna put a conversion value. Let's actually take a step back. Let's say that we were doing a purchase, and then I would insert, instead of the thank you page for the opt-in, I would insert the thank you page that somebody lands on after they make a purchase. I go to next, and then I could define a conversion value. So if this purchase was $29.95, I would define the value as $29.95. So go through and set up the different options you want to track. You might be tracking leads, you might be tracking sales, you might be tracking full registrations, you might even be tracking when people add products to the cart. So you can track all of this inside of your Facebook account to see how your advertising is doing. Now the second way that you're going to use your Facebook pixels is to create audiences. This is for retargeting and there's multiple options of the types of custom audiences we want to create. We could target anyone who visits your website. Then we could follow up on anybody who's visiting your website with ads. And you notice currently we have it set to 30 days. Well, we could change this to 60 days. We could change this to 90 days. And an interesting tactic that you can use is you could set several different audiences set to different frequencies. For example, we could have one that's anyone who visits our website in the last three days. And then we could do another one for anyone who visits our website in the last 30 days. So we might be running different ads for those who visited our website most recently compared to people who visited our ads a month ago. So there's a lot of options you have here in setting it. In addition, we can have people who visit specific pages, people visiting specific pages but not others, people who haven't visited in a certain amount of time. For example, we could set people who have visited specific pages and I could put in this box people who have opted into my list so I would again enter the same address that my marketingcoach.com slash thanks for people who had opted into my list and then I would be tracking any of those who had just opted into my list. Well what if I wanted to follow up on those who opted into my list but they didn't confirm? Well we could go through and we could do people visiting specific pages who didn't, didn't visit other pages. So we would have your equals and this would be the thank you page after someone opts in. And then we'd have the second one would be the page they land on after they've confirmed, would be the second page we'd enter in. And then we could specifically target those who opted in but didn't confirm their email. There's a lot of ways that you can start using this. You could target those who've opted in but haven't purchased yet by adding the second box would be the purchases. So you can create all types of custom audiences for your retargeting. Don't neglect this section because some of the most valuable advertising you will ever do will be the retargeting and going back to those who've already visited your site, those who've already opted in, those who, and even those who've purchased your products. Even if you're only investing maybe 10% to 20% of your ad budget on retargeting, you may find that a majority of your actual sales and profits come from the retargeting campaigns that you do. So don't neglect this section.